Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bennett coming to you now with a new set of videos. This is a new chapter. We are describing motion or movement. And so we're looking at chapter two and our first video is on position. So, but before we even get into that idea, first of all, we always describe movement or motion as a change in position, which is why we are starting with a position video very logical. We always describe motion as a change in position. So something is moving from one place to another. And this whole process is intuitive. We're visual beings. We see things move. We move a lot. You know, I sit in here and I fly my hands around all the time. But there's certain methods and certain techniques we can use, especially in the physics classroom, where we describe position in order to more accurately define or describe the movement of an object or a person. So let's break it down a little bit more. To describe position, just like a graph, we have certain rules in order to describe um, an object's position. So we have an example, and you saw this in class. We've got a field full of people. It's very, very dark. No one knows what's going on. They were dropped there, and you're kind of watching from above. And so we can see these people, and I can describe them. I can say, yeah, this guy is down here in the lower kind of left. He's not quite in the bottom left. And this guy is a little bit above him, off to the left a little bit more. There's one guy kind of in the middle-ish here and then somebody else further, but he's a little bit above. It's not very efficient to describe. If I asked you to draw this picture using that description, you probably would not come up with something even close to this. So what we need to do, first of all, is we need to include labels. And these labels can be whatever you want. And their main job is to make sure that we know who we're talking about. So we're going to make this guy down here in the bottom corner A, and this guy B, and the guy in the middle C, and this guy over here D. So now what I can say is if I'm describing this to you, there is a person A, and he's kind of towards that bottom left, and B, and C, and D, and we can go on, and we know exactly who we're talking about. It sets that ground that baseline for us as we talk about the position of these individuals. But that's not quite enough. We're still talking with really fuzzy terms. We also need a point. And to do this, we use a coordinate system or a coordinate axis or a grid or whatever term you want to use. So if we go back, here's our little guys. Again, this position, I, I can't describe it def definitely and definitively enough. So we turn on or we use a grid and now each of these individuals is on a certain particular point within this system and I can say all right if I draw my axes this is gonna be point zero one two three and so on up to n number of points n just means we continue our series on and on and on same thing we can go up to one two and three on and on and on up till n number of points so a I can say his position in blue because it matches here. He is at position 2 on the x-axis, 2 on the y-axis, so he gets a 2-2. Two two. Now I know exactly where he is coming from. I know exactly where he is no matter what I'm looking at. B, we can do the same thing. C, D, we can do the same thing. These are special points and they are called reference points. So now we are ready to describe an object's position. So position is a combination of those things and this gives us a reference point. And that tells us where we start. Remember, an object in motion is a change in position. So if we go back to our diagram, I can have person A, he's going to turn red, I can have person A move up to this point. So now he is A prime. This A prime has a new position. He has moved in some way. We're not quite describing does he move diagonally or does he go up and then over, does he go over and then up. That's not so important right now. What we're really describing is saying he started at a point, he's ending at a new point. He, there has been motion, there's been movement there. So again, it's intuitive to us. We're visual beings. We can see when things move. I asked you that question in class. How do you know when something's moving? It's hard to describe. We use position. Okay, to describe, so labeling, giving them a point, so setting these things on axes. Take a look at the critical thinking questions. As always, there are questions here to help you think through the material, and we're going to keep talking about this in class, so we'll see you there.